a friend gave me his Hewlett Packard 33C calculator, which probably qualifies as a vintage calculator at this point in time, and he gave it to me so I could add it to my vintage calculator collection. It was basically working, but only if I powered it from my uh, bench power supply. The charging circuit seemed to be fried, and the original battery pack was missing, and there had been some corrosion. One of the battery terminals was eroded away, leaving just the stub at the center, but not in alignment with any battery I could put in there. And I decided to not have a new battery pack fabricated for this, but rather just uh, make a battery eliminator, because I'm not going to use it regularly, and I just want to be able to demonstrate it from time to time. I decided since I had a number of old used USB chargers for various cell phones, smartphones, what have you, laying around that I would use one of them for this purpose. Just grabbed one at random. It wasn't marked as to how much current it could put out, but I was sure it would put out more than this calculator would need. It had a micro USB cable connector on the end, and so I rummaged through my junk box and found a micro USB extension cable and I lopped off the last few inches leaving the female socket end part of the cable intact as shown here. I stripped about one inch of the jacket off exposing the five inner conductors. Uh, the red and black seem likely choices for the 5 volt DC power coming from the uh, wall adapter or charger. I tested that with a voltmeter and that's what they were, so I lobbed off the other three conductors leaving just the red and the black. Here's my little sketch of the circuit for the battery eliminator. It's really just a classic circuit right out of the data books. It shows the micro USB socket connector on the left with its red and black conductors providing 5 volts DC. I'm using an LM317 linear adjustable voltage regulator. Uh, the input, output, and adjust pins are shown. The output goes to the plus battery terminal of the calculator, and the black wire from the USB connector goes to the minus terminal of the battery connector. The LM317 is wired between the USB connector's red wire and the output. And then there are two resistors, R1 and R2, connecting the positive and negative outputs and the adjust pin. The original Hewlett Packard battery pack for this calculator produced a nominal 2.8 volts DC, so that's the value I used in the V out of this calculation. The calculation for determining the voltage given R1 and R2 is shown and I just flipped the calculation around so it would tell me what I needed to have as R2. Normally you'd have uh, a somewhat higher value for R1. That would be the classic value, but it worked out with my junk box components better to use 220 ohms for R1, and then that provided 270 out of the calculation for R2. Before building it into the calculator, I used a breadboard to test with my calculated components and I got the desired 2.8 volts as measured on my voltmeter. I also took a look at the output voltage with my oscilloscope and uh, not exactly shown in this photo but I did check to see if there was any spurious uh, oscillations or anything going on because I didn't use any stabilizing capacitors in the circuit. I didn't think I really needed them in this instance and um, I didn't. My goal was to have the USB cable uh, fit inside the battery compartment of, of the calculator rolled up so that it could stow there and still have the uh, voltage regulator in that same space and not have it conflict with the cable. I wanted it to tuck away as inconspicuously as possible and not have any parts hanging out in space that would catch on the cable. So I came up with this little wiring diagram uh, which showed the voltage regulator output pin being soldered directly to the battery plus terminal 
and then uh, the black wire of the of the incoming power and uh, the second resistor of the regulator being tacked onto the remnants of the negative battery terminal and the uh, red lead from the incoming power tacked directly onto the input terminal of the voltage regulator and then I was going to anchor the cable and the regulator to the inside of the battery compartment using some sort of glue. Here I have the three leads of the LM317 formed and the 220 ohm feedback resistor R1 is already uh, cut in its leads tied around the voltage regulator leads and then this shows the way the rest of the circuit went together inside the battery compartment it's still kind of sprung up away from the inside wall of the battery compartment. That'll be fixed once I get the glue or other adhesive in there. Note how all the parts are formed and positioned such that they're right up against one wall or another of the battery compartment to best stay away from the cable. Before turning the calculator power switch on, I do a final voltage check and functionality verification of the power supply using the same method as initially. Even though I usually find it to be messy, at least hot melt glue is fairly quick and it's pretty strong and uh, it's also not brittle. It'll remain um, somewhat elastic and flex rather than break uh, and it sticks to practically anything so I ended up using that one glob of hot melt glue under the voltage regulator, hold it down flat against the inside of the battery compartment, and another big glob over the end of the USB cable so that when it flexes it doesn't translate those forces to the uh, solder connections. I should note that most of these linear regulators require a couple of volts uh, higher input than the desired output in order to work and I didn't bother to look up what that voltage was for the LM317 but I was pretty sure that it would be no more than 2 volts since I've got a 5 volt input and a desired 2.8 volt output just running on my quick and dirty uh, design scheme here pretty shameless I know but still uh, I was pretty confident that it would work properly and I wasn't going to be dropping so much voltage and the power was going to be low, so I wasn't worried about heat generation from the LM317. The USB cable tucks up pretty nicely in the available space. So when I want to demonstrate this calculator, I take the battery cover and remove it, exposing the USB cable, and then I unstow the USB cable and plug it into my, or plug my uh, USB charger into the uh, end of this cable. And here are a couple photos of the calculator operating with this uh, hacked power supply, this battery eliminator circuit.